Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new course of C Programming. So today's lecture, we are learning this data type called float, which means floating point numbers, fractions. Why do we need to learn them? So far we've seen integers, we've worked on integers, we've done practice programs, some intense programs also, but they have limitations. They can only do simple arithmetic, add, subtract, multiply, and to some extent divide. But division is also only possible if they are perfectly divisible numbers. 6 divided by 3, yeah, perfect 2. But if you do 5 divided by 2, what do you want? 2.5. You can't get that. Integers can't give you 2.5. They'll give you 2 as a portion, 1 as a remainder, which is not practical for your real world operations. Not just this, even if you think of powerful arithmetic, you think of square root. Square root of 25, perfect 5, great. Square root of 26, it's a fraction, 27, fraction, 28, fraction, all the way to 36. So if you don't work with fractions, that means floating point numbers, you can't calculate square roots. You can't do trigonometry. Tan of 45, 1. Tan of any other angle, again a fraction. You got my point. You want to do serious arithmetic. Treat yourself as a powerful programmer who can handle real world situations. For crying out loud, the run rate that you have in a cricket match, the required run rate, the strike rate of a batsman, they're all floating point numbers. So here you go. To do those kind of calculations, you need to work with floating point numbers. So that's what we're going to do in today's lecture. Today, I'm going to show you how to declare a floating point number, how to input, which means scan F, how to output, which means print F of floating point numbers, how to control the output. Many a times you see very badly printed out floating point numbers with too many digits after the point, an accuracy that nobody needs, but it's just shown and that looks bad. It looks like a programmer hasn't learned them properly and doesn't have a control over his or her own program. So something as simple as overs. I think I've used that example before also in some of the some of the other lecture. 4.2 overs, fine. 4.4 overs, 4.5 overs. There's nothing like 4.6 overs that looks stupid. It should be 5. Not even 5.0 overs. Even that looks stupid. It should just be 5. Yeah, when one more ball is bowled, then it should be 5.1. And a well-written program, when you watch a cricket match next time, keep your eyes open on all these things. Because who does that? The programmers, which is going to be you in the future. For all you know, a year from now, two years from now, you launch your own cricket app. You, if it strikes gold, that's it. You're set for life. Anyway, just giving you an example. So you want to work with real-world uh, values. You need to know how to work with floating point numbers. That's what you're going to do at today's lecture. I'll show you how to work with them how to balance out integers and floats. So not all values in a program are int, not all values are floats. Many a times you divide integers to produce a floating point number, like the number of runs scored by a batsman has to be an integer. The number of balls faced by a batsman has to be an integer. But you divide the two, you get the strike rate, and that will be a floating point number, which will be shown as a percentage. So when you do things like this, there are various situations that a programmer should be aware of before he or she codes it. Otherwise, you may think you have written a perfect program. When you execute it, you get stupid results. So you need to know the compatibility between ints and floats. When you move them around, what happens? How to take the floor value, how to take the seal value, how to round a floating point number, the header files required for doing this. And what is called typecasting, the example that I gave you that creates a problem where I show you how we calculate the strike rate or even the marks, the marks you scored in an exam, let's say 65, the total was 100. So you should get 65%, 65 divided by 100. Now you're dividing 65 and 100, both are integers, but what you want is a fraction which you make into a percentage. And to do that, unless you do typecasting, you will not get the correct answer. So what is typecasting, how it is done? All of that I'll be showing you in today's lecture. The idea is today you learn float properly so that tomorrow, which means the next lecture, when I do practice programs on float, some fabulous programs are prepared in my mind. Uh, simple interest calculation, fixed deposit receipt, bank statements, um, salary slips of employees. When we're going to do all that, I need to be absolutely sure that yes, my student knows how to work with a float, floating point number so that I can teach him or her how to create the logic for that whole program. Okay. So that's what is the scope of today's lecture. This whole lecture along with the entire course of C programming is there on my website. Come on my website. The link is given down below bharatacharyaeducation.com. Click on the link, register yourself as a user, see the list of courses I teach, various subjects. Uh, out of that, select C 
programming the coa also very closely related by the way this float is nothing else but i typically 754 32 bit format and double which is bigger than float is 64 bit format so if you learned coa from me or by yourself or if you learn microprocessors from me or by yourself you know how to correlate the two if you not learn those subjects no problem you will learn it later so when you learn them you know this float is what you see over there is the i typically 754 32 bit floating point format Anyway, I teach all these subjects at this code lady. So over there, from all the courses, select the C programming course, click subscribe. As soon as you make the payment, the course becomes active. Start watching the videos. This is a course where more time will be spent by you by practicing. You watch the videos, you gain the knowledge. Don't think by just watching videos, you know programming. No, programming is a skill. There's no by arting here. You can't remember what I've taught. You have to practice it. Keep practicing till the time this becomes second nature. While doing all this, you don't have to think twice. That's when you start becoming a programmer. And then there's no end to it. I'm a Formula One fan. But when I watch those races, apart from the races, you see all those displays. You see three-digit accuracy of floating point numbers. You see how well they are aligned. And you tell yourself the microcontrollers used inside must be so accurate that sometimes races, qualifying positions are decided by thousandth of a second. So that level of accuracy of the engineer is the one that gives fairness to all those players. They are doing their job. We also have to do ours. Anyway, so hope to see you at my website where you learn the whole lecture and the whole course. Wish you all the best. Do well. We are going ahead.